All right, let's talk about the dynamic host configuration protocol, also known as DHCP. Why do we need it? We need it because you need an IP address. You cannot use a network unless you have an IP address. And without having an IP address, you definitely can't talk outside of a network. You could probably get away with some limited communication inside a network without an IP address using just MAC addresses. You're not going to get very far with that. Um, so you need to get an IP address. And how are you going to get an IP address? Well, you have one option, uh, manual configuration. You can open up the settings on your computer and click, I don't know, it's probably about five or six or seven clicks to get down to a box that looks a lot like this one here on the left that has IPv4 properties. And you can put in an IP address and a subnet mask and a default gateway. And you're probably also going to want a DNS server unless you have memorized all the IP addresses that you need. You're going to want a DNS server. So you got to put in one or two DNS servers to make DNS work. Um, so you can do manual configuration and it's great for servers. You, for a server, you want it manually configured so that you always know exactly what the IP address is and you don't want server IP addresses to change because that's really bad for getting to them. Um, it's okay for desktops because desktops are moving around a lot between networks, but you really, 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 really don't want to use something like manual IP configuration on your laptop because then you'd have to open up these settings every time you switch networks. So when you get home, you open up the IPv4 settings and set your IP address to an available IP address on your local network at your house. When you go to Starbucks, you would have to open up the IP address settings, change it again to an available IP address because you can't have multiple devices with the same IP address or else everything breaks. So you change it again to an available IP address on the Starbucks network. And when you get to the office, the same thing, you, you have to change it again. And you would have to, I mean, there's a lot of tricky parts about it. For one, when you've got people coming and going, you've got to keep track of what IP addresses are available and what IP addresses aren't available. And kind of stinks to do that for a manually configured network. So we're not gonna do that. Nobody does that. You'd be crazy to do that um, inside your business, inside your your local network, unless you're doing it for servers and maybe, maybe for desktops. But there's even better options for those that we'll talk about. Oh, here's a, screen, a screenshot of how you can actually manually set the IP address on your phone and if you're interested, you have to dig pretty deep in the settings and long click on things and long press. And this is on Android. I don't even know how you would do it on iOS. But it, it's not a simple thing. It can be done, but it's not a simple thing to set up your phone on a manual IP address rather than using DHCP, which is the default. So what kind of information do we need? Well, we kind of already talked about it. Um, the IP address. You need an IP address. You need a subnet mask, you need a default gateway. And the default gateway, when we talk more about routing, that will make more sense. The default gateway is how your computer knows to get traffic outside of your network. So if you're inside your network, it's just gonna send it directly to that. If you're trying to send something to Amazon, then it's gonna send it to your default gateway to get out of your network. And that's, you need that if you want to talk outside your network. I guess as long as you're okay talking only to other computers on your network, then you don't need it. But as soon as you want to use the internet, you need that default gateway. And finally, semi-optional is DNS. Again, unless you've memorized every IP address that you could possibly need, you're going to want DNS servers configured there. And DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, kind of saves the day here. Because it means you don't have to automatic or manually, you don't have to manually configure an IP address every time you switch networks or every time you turn your computer on. This can automatically be done. Now, obviously, somebody's got to configure it. Somebody's got to set up how it's going to happen. But once it's configured and once it's set up, it happens automatically. As soon as a computer connects to the network, it can use DHCP to obtain this configuration. Dynamic, meaning it changes. Host, meaning your computer. Configuration, configuration parameters and, and, and the protocol. So the, the way it works is four bits of communication. Four messages are sent back and forth. 
The first message is what's called a DHCP Discover. And this is essentially your computer saying, Help! Help! I'm lost and alone and I don't know who I am. Or where I am. That's what happens with a DHCP Discover. Your computer gets to the network and it shouts out and it says, I don't know where I am. That's DHCP Discover. And as long as a DHCP server is on the network, it's going to hear that DHCP Discover. It's going to hear the cry for help and it's going to respond with a DHCP offer and it's going to send that offer directly to you um, using your MAC address because it has your MAC address. Um, your first message, the Discover, has to be a broadcast because you don't know anything. You don't know anybody's IP address. You don't know anybody's MAC address. So you have to broadcast and shout on the network. Well, the server knows who you are and knows what you need, so it's going to respond with a unicast, and it's going to send that back to you, and it's going to say, hey, hi, I know who you are. Here, This is the network information that you might want. And when you receive that offer, then the client turns around and sends a request back to the server and says, okay, thank you for those configuration parameters. Here, basically sending the same list back and saying, Here's the list of configuration parameters that I want. And it broadcasts that out again to everybody. And then finally, you receive an acknowledgement back from the server, an ACK. We get ACKs a lot in networks, and an ACK means, okay, you are now that IP address. It seems a little silly that we would have to request, send a request after we've already received an offer, but the trick here is that you might have multiple DHCP servers on a single network. And if all of them receive a broadcast, they might all respond with different offers. So a single client might have three or two or three or one, potentially, let's say three, that you have three DHCP servers. A single client might receive three DHCP offers on a single network. And rather than keeping those IP addresses continually used up for a client that's not going to use them, it's going to send a request out, a broadcast request, to the one DHCP server for the one set of configuration parameters that it wants. And that way, all the other DHCP servers can say, oh, okay, he's not using that one. I don't need to use it. We can use that on the next discover request that comes across the network. So if you look in Wireshark, you can, you can actually see DHCP in action. And you might have to do some tricky stuff to make it work. Um, on Windows, there's a couple of commands that we'll talk about in a minute, I believe, over um, for getting rid of DHCP configuration and then requesting a new DHCP configuration. And you can see in, in the screenshot that I have below here that I have a DHCP discover, a DHCP offer, a DHCP request, and a DHCP ACK, just like I promised it was. And the first message, the discover, is that broadcast from IP address 0.0.0.0, meaning I don't have an IP address, to 255.255.255.255, meaning broadcast out to everybody. I don't know what network I'm on. This is for everybody. And then the request in response actually has a destination IP address, and that is the new IP address that you're going to have. But when we talk more about the data link layer, we'll talk about how this message actually gets to you, which is going to be using your MAC address. And that's how it's going to arrive because when it's sent, your computer doesn't even know that its new IP address is 10.0.1.10. And then the request goes out and then the ACK comes back. So when you request an IP address from DHCP, this is gonna be a limited time lease. And the reason for a limited time, lease, well, okay, you can actually have infinite time leases. You can set up DHCP to give an IP address to a device forever. There are probably legitimate reasons for that. I don't know what they are. So typically you're gonna see a limited time lease. And, and what that allows is for us to reuse an IP address when a device leaves the network. For example, if you're Starbucks and you have a network, a wireless network that, can, that has 250 IP addresses, for example, and you have a thousand customers come through your store in a day, well, you don't want 
to have to create four different networks for each of you know each of those thousand customers to have IP addresses. What you would rather do is recycle IP addresses. So when a guy comes in in the morning and get picks up his coffee, his device connects to the network, gets an IP address. His IP address is 192.168.1.20. Well, when he's gone 30 minutes later, you could probably reuse that IP address for the next person to come into the shop. And so when they come in, you can give them that same IP address again if you can figure that lease time to be short enough that it's expired. So really the lease time varies depending on your needs. So inside your home network, you might have a lease time of a week because you're not having a whole lot of people cycle through your network. You, you for the most part, you've got your devices and, and that's about it. So you have a lease time of a week. And so you don't have a whole lot of DHCP traffic going on on that network. Um, your ISP, at least my ISP, my internet service provider has a lease time of one day, meaning they give me an IP address to use for a day. And unless I renew that lease, which you can do, and, and we'll talk about that in just a second, unless I renew that lease, that IP address will expire after one day and then they can give it to someone else. And then if I reconnect to the network, say if I go out of town on vacation and shut off my router, then I'm not gonna have an IP address for that week or, or however long I'm on vacation. Somebody, they can give that IP address to someone else and when I come back and rehook that up, then I'm gonna request an IP address again and get a different IP address. And they're not stuck paying for an IP address that they're not using because I'm out of town. So they're gonna recycle those every day. And a coffee shop, again, I don't, I don't know what the default time is or what times you might use in a coffee shop, but it's definitely probably gonna be shorter than a day. You might even go with 30 minutes or half or an hour um, just to keep those IP addresses cycling so that as customers come and go, those IP addresses aren't reserved for them when they're not there anymore. And when they come back, we can give them a new IP address and it's not a big deal. So the last important thing about leases is that bef you don't wait for it to run out and then request a new IP address. By what, you, what you're gonna do is halfway through your lease time. So if your lease time is a week, halfway through that at three and a half days, you're going to try to renew the lease. And that means your computer contacts the DHCP server and says, hey, my lease, has, my lease is halfway up. I'd like to continue using it. So can we renew that? And it will reset that timer, assuming the DHCP server is there and that they'll, they want to renew that lease, which is the default. Um, then you will renew the lease and you'll continue to be able to use that IP address. If the DHCP server is offline, then you'll try again to renew the lease right before the lease ends, like, you know, half an hour before the lease ends. So if you've got a week long lease, it's gonna be right before that deadline. It's going to request one more time. Um, this time, rather than talking directly to the DHCP server, it's gonna shout it out to everybody and say, hey, I'd like to, I'd really like to keep that IP address um, that I was using. And the DHCP server will hopefully be there to respond to that. So again, if you're in a coffee shop and you're sitting there, you're not gonna be running out of your IP address after half an hour, if that's what their DHCP lease time is. At 15 minutes, you're gonna be running DHCP again to re-request that lease and maintain that time. Another important part of DHCP is the idea of a reservation. And when I said there's better options for that, better options for desktops than manual configuration, this is it, a DHCP reservation. The really great thing about a DHCP res reservation, what it does is it ties an IP address to your MAC address on the DHCP server. So when, it's, when the DHCP server sees a new DHCP request from your MAC address, then it knows and it has a DH, uh, uh, an IP address reserved for that MAC address so that when you log onto the network and request a certain IP address, it could pass that to you. And the computer, the server doesn't, or, or desktop, doesn't have to know what that IP address is. All it knows is, hey, I'm on the network, I need DHCP, I'm gonna hit up the DHCP server, um, or I'm gonna, you know, DHCP discover, send out a request. The DHCP server is there and says, hey, this is the MAC address, look at this, we've got an IP address reserved for it, send that along. 
And that way, you, you still get to maintain the same IP address all the time without having to do that manual configuration. So especially if you want to do something like port forwarding to your laptop, you don't want to do manual configuration because that's bad news, but you want the IP address to stay the same because when you set up port forwarding, you're specifying an IP address. So we need to, uh, uh, the best way to set that up is, is with that DHCP reservation so that every time you get back home to your network with your laptop, you're gonna get the same IP address on that local network. So here's those commands I was telling you about. IP config slash release is the DHCP release command on Windows. So if you want to clear out your IP configuration, if you want to, and, and what this actually does is send a command to the DHCP server and says, hi, I'm done with this, release. I'm done with this IP address. And the, the DHCP server can then use that IP address for somebody else. And what it, what it does on your computer then is clears out the IP configuration. With, and then when you type IP config slash renew, you're sending out that DHCP discover. So I actually typed these commands to get the Wireshark capture that I showed you a few slides ago. And you can see if you want to see DHCP in action on your network, type IP config slash release, IP config slash renew while you're doing a Wireshark capture. And you can see those commands going back and forth. And you can also IP config slash renew if you already have an existing DHCP lease. This would be the command to manually tell it to renew that lease rather than waiting till that halfway point to do it automatically. And that is all I've got to say about DHCP. It's a pretty awesome protocol, kind of magical, and it means that I don't have to worry about the network configuration at the office or at the Starbucks or at Walmart when I want to connect to a Wi-Fi network.